Hello guys, welcome back to my series, How to Animate a Fight Scene. I want to take this time to give you a tutorial on how to animate motion blurs. So this is one of the things that I uh, have been asked a few times recently. I was asked it on one of my videos and um, it reminded me to do this video now. Basically motion blurs are a recreation of the effect that you get with a low shutter speed. So if you you, if you have a if you have a shutter speed that's very fast, your motion blurs you won't get any. In the camera, it take it'll take in light very quickly, and what happens is if your shutter speed is slow, it will take in light over a longer period of time. That window that lens stays open for longer, and when you have that, you um, you get like this this blurring thing, these streaks. So basically we're recreating that, but I like to do it with a slightly more stylized method. This is um, this is one of the ways I can express my own style, and so this is not completely photo accurate. Um, the the main uh, inspirations for this are Baki JD, how he does his motion blurs, and also uh, Turquoise and Shin Ohira to some extent. So if you want like to look at some really awesome motion blurs, that's they're the two that I take a lot of inspiration from. I'd say mine's a bit like a mixture of them. I'm still trying to get mine to be as good as Bahi JD's, but it's taking me an infinitely long time to do so. He's extremely skilled. So anyway, um, I thought these poses here would be a good place to to demonstrate them. So there's a few things involved. Basically, um, the motion blurs will be dictated by a few different things. One of them is the direction it, at which a limb has gone from. Another one is the speed at which it's, it's the, the limb is traveling. And also there's a little bit of randomness in there, factored in there. So this was an exercise I was doing um, of keyframes where I wanted very snappy movements. So I wanted to go straight from one, no in-betweens or anything, just go straight into the other. So one, two, as you see, each time they dodge, they simultaneously dodge and strike each other. So it's very interesting. So here it goes straight from the that to a counter, to a further attack, to a counter. Well, to here, here there is an in-between here, but then to a counter, you see, they both attack, both dodge. He attacks, she dodges, she attacks, he dodges. You see, it's quite a fun, interesting game. I mean, if I played it right now, because the keyframes, there's no timing involved, it would just look like this. So they just, I would have to put in some timing. But anyway, from looking at the keyframes, we can see where would be appropriate to put a motion blur and where would not be appropriate. So I like to use onion skin when I'm, when I'm doing it. Let's go one frame in here so we can see the ghost of the frame before and we can see the frame that we're on right now. Pay attention to the limbs and see how far they have traveled since the last frame. This will give you a good indication of how fast they're moving. So, the fastest moving parts are this hand here, because that's gone all the way, if I get my red marker out. So that this hand here has gone from here, from this place, all the way over to here. That is probably the furthest distance in the entire thing, and notice how I haven't given it a motion blur. The other two are, are these two hands up here, you see her hands go from there all the way, one of them goes all the way down here, that's a long distance to travel. So if you were a camera, because you're recreating a camera effect, if you were a camera capturing that that light from that time, it will have, um, it could have traveled distance by the time the shutter opens and closes. I'm overcomplicating it, don't worry about the whole shutter thing, that's just how I like to think of it. Really what you should be thinking of is how fast have they been moving, what direction have they been moving in. So I'm tracking the direction since the last one, that's why it's important to have onion skin on so you know which direction they've been travelling from. And then you see I've already put in motion blurs here. For this one, okay, I've so that I haven't put in motion blurs so I'm going to do that now. I've got the direction here, I've got an idea of the direction, I've got an idea of the speed. So if the, the speed is high, then I, I generally stretch out the motion blurs for a longer period of time, so it would be something like that. I can also put in ones, uh, basically if the line is going this way, right, any lines that are kind of meeting horizontally to that line, like the elbow line here, 
they're ideal for doing motion blurs. The ones which are parallel, like the arm, the arm uh, lines here, they're not as ideal because they're already going in that direction. So uh, let's see where where else we can do it. So also notice she's got a foot here, okay, down here, and she moves that back to round about here. So that's it's not as far to travel, but it is a distance. So what we do then is we just reduce how much we do the blur, like how stretched out the blur is. Um, you will encounter that there is a threshold for this. So I set my threshold very low. That's personal taste, that's personal preference. This is where you, you can decide for yourself what you want to do. So for me, the limbs don't need to move that much of a distance for me to do motion blur. I can do motion blur on this because you see here it's gone in an arc like that. So I put in the motion blur here. The head's traveled forward, so I just, you know, put in a few here, here, and also that's on the, um, the trailing edge. So there's two edges in it. If an object goes, let's let's back up a little bit, okay? So let's say we got a circle traveling from here to here, like we did with the head. We've got the trailing edge and the leading edge. That's what I'm calling them. That's just my nicknames for them. So trailing edge is the edge that's left, that's behind the direction. So here we do it and you see how I, I switch between the eraser and the, and the brush. And I, what I do is I'll, I'll just kind of zigzag very quickly. I'm moving my pen quite a lot. And um, I create this kind of zigzag effect like that. I like to make it a bit sporadic, add a bit of character to it. And so erase the line and then right after I've erased the line like that, I draw in the line. And it's that's so that, you know, if I erase the whole piece and then draw it in, I won't remember where the rough outline of the shape is because I want to remember that so I can so I can put my line close to where it was. So I do that. So you'll notice that the zigzags where they are is um, when you're doing this, you're distributing the mass in the directions like that it's traveling, you see. So I'm distributing mass further away from, if, if you still imagine the line here, I'm distributing, hold on, I'm distributing the mass according to this line, I'm distributing it further away and also further in like that to the form. So that's on the that's on the trailing edge. So I'm going to I'm going to make a I'm going to annotate that here. Sorry about my handwriting. Let's just neaten that up a bit. So we've done the trailing edge. You can leave it at that. So some people will decide a lot of this is as I said before, it's down to personal preference. Some people will decide to leave it at the trailing edge. So they will only animate the trailing edge with the motion blur. So if we go back to here, um, they might say, you see here I've done a motion blur. Okay, they would um, leave out the leading edge. They would just have the trailing edge. So it would be something like that. And that's enough for them, right? But mainly because I'm inspired by Bahi JD, he's the biggest inspiration on my animations uh, in terms of aesthetic style for the animations. I choose to do the leading edge as well. So I choose to put motion blurs on the leading edge. Also, um, I should note that if this frame before this, the ball was here or here, I probably wouldn't put in a motion blur that large, you know, unless I, unless my um, threshold for having the motion blur was like ridiculously low, which I, it, I wouldn't have it that low because it's too much work. You know, if you, if you um, have a computer that processes this stuff, it will, you know, it takes time to render it. Now, if you're an artist doing this stuff with these lines, it takes you time to render this. So 
the lower your threshold, the more time it's going to take. But in my opinion, the better it's going to look. So you don't want to set your threshold too low because it will just take you forever. You'll have to do every tiny last detail in a zigzag form. Although that seems to be what Baggy JD does, so that's probably why I spend ages on these. So anyway, let's move on. So the leading edge. Now there is a distinct difference here that you must know between the leading edge and the trailing edge. Now if you're first getting started in using motion blurs, you might make this mistake. So I'm here to tell you about it. So let's go and do the same thing on the trailing edge, except afterwards I'm going to tell you how you can make it better. So erase bits, you can leave little bits in like that, that's quite nice to do. Okay, in the direction. You can leave little gaps in it like that, that's, that can be quite nice, like a, an element of randomness to it. You can even go along here. And look nice, make it look nice and dynamic like that. Now, there is a problem here with the leading edge. You do have to treat it differently than the trailing edge. You see how the trailing edge with this part, hold on, there we go. The trailing edge, I put an equal on almost an equal amount of volume, I spread it either side more or less equally. Now, with the leading edge, don't do that because your object has not traveled there yet. It has not traveled ahead yet. It has traveled here. So you're able to displace some of the, some of the object's volume here, but you're not able to displace it ahead. So what you actually have to do is you have to define this edge. So nothing goes beyond the leading edge. That's the biggest difference, okay? So nothing goes beyond the leading edge if you're doing motion blurs for the leading edge. So you have to have that. I mean, anything can happen behind it. You know, you can you can have matter eat into it like this, a negative space eat into it. That can look really cool. That's what I like to do. You can't have it ahead. It will just look weird. It will not look right. So there. Now you take those away and that's what you've got. I've kind of over explained it just so that everyone knows like exactly how to do it but it's it's very simple it's very straightforward when you do it finding the gauge of like the threshold like how far something needs to go before you give it a motion blur that's down to you you'll discover it as you go along you'll probably just have a natural tendency and you'll stop at a certain point if you're like me you like to really push the boundaries you might consider lowering your lowering your threshold. So with parts like this, you see the the foot here. The foot has just gone from this direction, right? And then in this next frame, it, it actually goes back a little bit. And you see, I've just given these little tiny things, little tiny motion blurs. And you'll notice that um, I like to eat into the actual shape itself. It's really simple to do and I just love the look that it gives. So how you do that, I'll demonstrate it here. So here, you see, I'll just find a place where I haven't done it. The leg goes from there to there. Put on onion skin, see how far it's traveled. It's traveled from there to here. So what I do is I just cut out, I just chop it, chop it up, and then go like this. And I don't know about you, you, pr you might not think it looks good. I think it looks great. <laughs> I love the look of motion blurs. I mean, I've got a long way to go if I'm going to get it to look as good as Bahi JD's because he has a different method, which is very difficult to pull off. But, you know, it's, it's a start. So I'll explain quickly how Bahi JD does it. What it looks like he does is um, he actually freehand draws the motion blur as he's drawing the limb no speed in the lines, he would just, but this is without having this as a reference or as a guide, he would just put it down, like, so he would have to have it clearly mapped out in his head beforehand, like, where the form is. In my opinion, it, it it's extremely difficult to do this kind of thing, and that's why I admire it a lot, and I wish I could do it, because it looks awesome. 
concentrate on if you're doing it for the first time and you're stuck concentrate on the frame before so look and then look at how far each limb or each object has come since the last one anyway that's that's it good luck and um hope this video helps i'll see you in the next one for 2d animation it's very difficult to separate your drawing skills from the animation skills in the results that you get uh, think about it in order to make the first frame of an animation in 2d you have got to draw uh, there's no way around it so 2d animation 